Well, hi everyone. Here's an overview of the Denon AVR E400 network receiver. I think it's a very attractive looking unit. Nice, clean, simple front face. They tout its power, its networking capability, and also its upscaling. The 185 watt number, it's an honest number, but it's a peak instantaneous number. Its continuous full range maximum capability is more like 90 watts, as they say in their manual. And here's a look at the front connections and buttons. You have a HDMI input, a USB, which is a 5 volt 1 amp, your input for your setup mic, headphone jack. Here's buttons to select your input source, your zone controls, dimmer and status button, and also four quick selections for inputs. And again, just a really nice, clean look in my opinion. So to show off the backside so you can see the different connections that it has, it's focused primarily on HDMI. It has five on the backside. Remember, it has one on the front. Those are inputs. It has one output uh, to go to your TV or monitor. It has some legacy connections. Uh, it has the digital coax and also optical inputs here, one of each. Uh, it has two component video inputs, one composite video input. Uh, it has four left-right analog inputs. Uh, in terms of outputs, the only output that it has is that HDMI output. It doesn't have any analog video outputs or analog audio outputs, except for a subwoofer output right here. It doesn't have any other preamp outputs. The speaker connectors are a little bit different than what probably a lot of people are used to. Uh, some things in the past have had these, but these are the first I've seen on Denon. Instead of the screw type connectors, these are push connectors. So you can see here that when you push it, closes the hole, you slip your wire in, uh, and then you let go and it'll clamp it inside of there. For bare speaker wire, I think these are better than the screw-on types, but for banana plugs like this, uh, this is one of my favorites right now, this is the Sewell deadbolt design. Uh, they do work for these. Uh, I didn't think I would like it, uh, but they turn out to be okay, except for one connection right here, which I'll show you, which is a little problematic. So if you look at this one, this will work fine. You slide it in, you have some good room here for your cable to come out and not interfere with any pieces there. Slide it out here. But this one, right here, and CNET notes it on their review of this unit as well. This, you'll see here, I can't fit it in. It interferes with it. And this is pretty thick uh, for a base, so they make ones that are thinner. But any ones that are about this length, when they come out, you'll be able to see it here. Uh, it, this is right where your, your wire is going to be trying to come out. So this is just a unfortunate design oversight, in my opinion, for banana plugs on this unit because this connector right here really doesn't support it, unless you have a, a shorter plug or you want to go to bare wire on just that, that one sp speaker wire right there. And speaking of speaker wire, Denon included a really nice set of speaker wire labels. This was a nice thing for me. I've been using cut up post-it notes and tape for years, uh, and this makes it look much nicer. Here's a look at the on-screen setup system. This video is not going to do it justice. Denon did a very nice job with the graphics. Steps you through it, tells you to plug in the microphone, turn your subwoofer on if you have one, uh, and then it'll start running through the test. So here you can hear the test tones it's going to put out. And then it's going to move from, you know, left to center and then so forth. So we've seen the back and we've seen the front. So now let's take a look on the inside. So I'm going to pull this cover off and we'll take a look at what they've got in there. I wanted to show you the inside, but I don't recommend that you take the cover off. Uh, it might violate your warranty. If you decide to do it though, uh, just note that there's some tape on the inside of the, the lid that connects it to the front cover that you're going to have to remove in order to get it off. So just taking a look around at the inside, you can see the electronics, the heat sinks there. Here's the power transformer. Next to it are the two power supply capacitors. You can't see very well in the video, but here's a picture. See there are 10,000 microfarad 71 volt caps. That's not bad for a receiver. Stepping around, here's the heat sink. You have some the higher power parts that are directly coupled to it. You can see here in the picture. Uh, these are stamped aluminum, I believe, fins. That's pretty common for receivers in this price class. They work fairly well. Here are the, the seven power channels, or amps. Uh, they appear to be all identical to each other. Here's a close-up of two of them. 
just stepping around. Um, and I'm not going to pretend that I know what all this is, just showing it off to you all. Here's the uh, HDMI connectors, uh, the circuit board with that, the power cord coming in. Here's the front panel circuit board, runs the display. Uh, also the volume control here you'll see on the back side. Another view of the, the power amps on that front board there. Uh, that's about it. Well, that's the end. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks.